Hello and a very warm welcome to your first Spanish lesson with me, Eva. Today I will be teaching you the Spanish alphabet. As Julie Andrews famously said, when you read you begin with A, B, C. Well, when you learn Spanish you begin with A, B, C. Okay, so this here is the Spanish alphabet, okay? Let's ignore these two for the time being. And if you were to count these letters, don't bother, I've already done it for you. There are 27 letters. So 27 letters in the Spanish alphabet, which means one more than in the English alphabet, okay? And the intruder is this letter here, okay? Now, why are we ignoring these two? Because we were told to, <laughs> okay? Some 30 years ago or so, I don't know exactly when, um, the Royal Academy of Spanish or Real Academia del Español, also known as RAE, decided that CH and double L would no longer be considered letters in their own right, okay? Up until that moment they were, which means that in olden times Spanish alphabet had 29 letters, but not any more. Why am I saying this? Just in case you are maybe using an old textbook to learn Spanish and there is a glossary at the end, you may find, if it's really old, that CH and double L, or rather words beginning with CH and double L, have a chapter of their own, okay? Same with old dictionaries. If you're using an old dictionary and you're trying to look up a word starting with CH or double L, you will find them in their own chapter, okay? Today, any word starting with CH will simply be in the C chapter and any word starting with double L you will find it under L, okay? Good, so not 29 anymore, now we only have 27 letters in the Spanish alphabet, okay? Speaking of letters or speaking of the alphabet, there are three things Okay, the first thing is, let's say, the visual, the graphic, okay? How these letters are written. Luckily, it's the Latin alphabet, not Cyrillic, like in Russian or some other, even more exotic ones. So the Spanish use the Latin alphabet and this is how the letters are written. Okay, so this is the graphic representation or the visual representation of the sounds in Spanish language, okay? The second thing is the name they have given these letters. In English you go A, B, C, D. Well, in Spanish they go A, B, C, D, okay? So the second thing is the name. And this is what you will need when you have to spell, okay? Um, spell out a word, maybe your name or your address in, uh, in Spain or any other Spanish-speaking country. Or in a situation where maybe you're trying to have a conversation with a Spanish-speaking person, they ask you for your name, they don't really understand it, or maybe your address, and you spell it out, okay? So you will be then naming these letters one by one. And that's why it's important to learn, okay, the, the alphabet or rather the names that these letters were given, okay? And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, letters are basically a representation of sounds, okay? And the good news is that pretty much um, uh, each letter corresponds to one sound or one sound 
is always represented by one letter, okay? In Spanish, you will not have the letter or the vowel A pronounced in seven different ways like in English, okay? A will always be A, okay? B will always be B, okay? And this is true, this is sort of the golden rule of the Spanish pronunciation. And as I said, the golden rule, you're immediately thinking, are there any exceptions? Yes, there are exceptions as always, but not that many, okay? And we will explain those in the next lesson. Today, let's just stick to uh, the rule and you will see that one sound always corresponds to one letter and the other way around. If you're reading and you're looking at letters, you will see that each letter always corresponds to the same sound, okay? Again, let's not uh, <laughs> worry about exceptions, but uh, just know that one sound, one letter, or one letter, one sound, okay? That's the golden rule of Spanish pronunciation, which makes things for you very easy, very simple, okay? You can be grateful to the Spanish that they've simplified their spelling and made it easy for you to learn it. Okay, good. So let's see what names these letters were given, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, Ñ, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, V, X, Y, Z. Okay? One more time, if you want, you can repeat after me. I will make sure I do it slowly at this time and try to really <laughs> get that um, name right, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay? Maybe you noticed that this letter in English Y is called Y, the Greek I, <laughs> not this I, this I here. Okay, letter I. So this is the Greek I as opposed to this one, which sometimes is called the Latin I, okay? I Latina as opposed to I Griega, okay? Most of the times you will just hear people say I, but to be on the safe side, you might want to say I Latina and definitely I Griega for this one, okay? Good. Again, as I said earlier, when will you need these letters or when will you need to know the names when you're spelling out words, okay? I know that living in Spain and when I maybe make an appointment over the phone 
and they want to write down my name, obviously a foreign name. They struggle and the only way to get it right is to spell it out. And um, obviously there's other circumstances, situations where you might be either required or you might want to spell something or ask about how a certain word is spelled. Okay, so it's not just that you need to know how to spell possibly your name, your address, your email address, but if someone is spelling a Spanish word to you, you need to know how to write it down, okay, or how it's written. Good. Okay, now I do want to point out the vowels, okay, the five vowels, because the Spanish vowels are very, very different from the English ones. I've already mentioned one difference, and that is that um, in English, for example, the letter or the vowel A can be pronounced in, I think, <laughs> seven different ways, okay? Depending on the word, you might say A, E, E, even O, etc. okay? And that for the Spanish is very confusing. <laughs> when they're learning English, they struggle with the pronunciation, with the reading, with speaking a lot. Why? Because there's no rule really. When A is pronounced one way, when it's pronounced another way, it really takes a lot of practice, okay? But for you, it's very simple. The vowel A will always be pronounced A. The vowel E will always be E. E will be E, O will be O, and U will be U, okay? Always. There's no exception here. <laughs> that, that really is a good uh, piece of news, no? So the five vowels in Spanish are always the same. When you see them written somewhere, you know that you will always pronounce them the same way. A, E, E. O, U. Another good thing, or another difference rather, is that unlike Spanish vowels, or unlike, sorry, unlike English vowels, or even better, unlike the English speakers, the Spanish do not drag their vowels out, okay? So, A is not A, or E is not E. E is not E, and especially this really, <laughs> uh, O is never O, okay? And of course, U is not U. They're very short and crisp, okay? Don't try to sort of drag them out. Don't try to, um, I don't know, elongate them or, or even add uh, other vowels to the end. For example, the word um, puedo, I can, puedo, is not puedo, no? If you say puedo, it sounds like you've added another u here, okay? The Spanish don't do that. Vowels are very short, very crisp, and uh, it's just a single sound, okay? It's not a double sound, o, okay? So keep them short, keep them crisp, and you will be sounding very, very native-like, okay? That's my first, <laughs> first advice, and it's about the, this, this shortness of the Spanish vowels. So one more time, and if you want, you can repeat after me. It's A, E, I, O, U. Okay, that's all there is to it, okay? Don't make them any longer than that. And they're always the same. They always sound the same. The letter A, when you see it in writing, will always be A, okay? You don't have to think how to pronounce it. And um, another, let's say, tricky, uh, or another uh, tricky letters might be uh, G, which other one? Uh, H is not really tricky, 
The only thing about H you need to know is that it's never pronounced, okay? It's just there. Um, it just, it, it, well, it does serve a purpose, I guess, but basically um, you never pronounce it, okay? When you see an H, just um, ignore it. Then we have J. Um, J is tricky in the sense that it's sometimes pronounced like G, okay? Like G. But we will uh, see that tomorrow. Today I just want to point out a few tricky ones, okay? So we've seen G and J, which sometimes sound the same. Same happens with K and Q, okay? Uh, they, they sound the same. The only thing is that when you write, um, when you see them written, you will pronounce them the same. But when you're writing Spanish words, um, you have to be very careful when to use ka and when to use ku, okay? So in writing, you can't just say, oh, they sound, they sound the same. It doesn't matter which one I use. No, you have to know <laughs> how a word is spelled, okay? Uh, how the word is spelled properly. So when spelling, when writing, you will have to choose between ka and ku. But when you see them in writing and or you're just speaking, um, obviously, they, as I said earlier, they will sound exactly the same, okay? And then another one, tricky for other reasons, obviously, is the R or R in Spanish, R, uh, which, as you, I'm sure, know, <laughs> is pronounced R, okay? And that might be a bit difficult for you to, um, to do, uh, so rolling it. Um, it gets even a bit trickier when you have a double R and you have to roll it even more. But once you manage to roll it, rolling it a little bit more uh, or doubly uh, is really easy, okay? The most difficult thing is just to get your mouth, your tongue, to the muscles in your mouth to actually roll the R. Um, I would recommend strongly if you're just starting out or maybe if you've been learning Spanish on and off or learning continuously for a while, um, if you haven't worked on your pronunciation to do that now or from, from this moment onwards, really make sure that whatever you're learning, you are always, always paying attention to correct pronunciation, okay? This is the, the first giveaway when we as foreigners um, learn Spanish. If just opening our mouths and saying one or two words, they don't sound reasonably Spanish, um, it's a clear giveaway that we are foreigners, okay? So um, another reason for it is maybe you don't mind having a little bit of an accent. And I don't, and I'm sure I still do, in fact. Um, and that's okay. But when the accent interferes with understanding, then we've got a problem, okay? So you don't want that to happen, okay? A little bit of accent is good. Some people even find it sexy and cute and, oh, that's so sweet. I like your, whatever, French, Italian or English accent. That's fine. But don't let it be too strong, don't let it be too obvious, because it will interfere with understanding, okay? So my, my strong, strong <laughs> feelings about it, or my, my, my big sort of advice here is that you, uh, for the next, I would say, three months, assuming that you will continue to learn Spanish and practice and add new words, um, my advice is please, 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 as you learn vocabulary and grammar and whatever it is that you're learning, um, please make sure that you pay a lot of attention to your pronunciation and really, really get it to, to sort of... So you sound the, 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 the best you can, okay, speaking Spanish. After, let's say, three months, there's, it's not a rule, a scientific one, but after three months, you will get the hang of it and naturally you will relax, okay? But for the first three months, be very conscious of how you're pronouncing Spanish words, okay? 
Good. Um, obviously, there's courses you can do or workshops or all kinds of things. Um, I even have a Spanish pronunciation workshop if you want to sign up. I'll leave the link below, but you can find it. Uh, you can find other sources as well, not necessarily <laughs> have to sign up for mine. And any word that you find, any new word that you find, uh, even sentences sometimes or phrases, uh, if you Google them, you will have the option of hearing what it sounds like. Okay, so do use um, any tool that you may be already are using, listen to how native speakers pronounce and just repeat after them and really try to, to, to do a good job repeating, okay, and sounding as Spanish as you can. Okay, good. Now, before our next lesson, I would like you to practice this, okay? One thing is for me to explain it and talk about it and you understanding it, but another thing is actually putting it into practice, okay? So, I hope I've done my job <laughs> well, I hope I've explained it well, I hope you understand the Spanish alphabet, don't worry about how many letters there are, just know that they are basically the same as in English, except there's an intruder, ñ, and just learn the names of these letters, okay? Practice, 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 practice makes perfect. So start just by going through the alphabet and repeating these names, saying them out loud, and then move on to spelling, spelling your name, uh, your full name, maybe your address, email address, maybe you have a business, a, a website, uh, URL or anything that you think might cause headache <laughs> to the Spanish, okay? So any sort of English or if you're not English speaking uh, or a native English speaker, maybe you speak other languages, any word uh, from your language uh, name uh, that you uh, no, the Spanish will struggle with, okay? So do practice a lot and then I'll see you again in our next lesson where I will go into a little bit more detail uh, about uh, uh, with some tricky sounds, okay? I will explain uh, those um, exceptions to the rule, okay? But for the time being, just remember the golden rule. One letter, one sound, or if you reverse it, one sound, one letter. Okay? Good. Okay, well, if you liked this first lesson, you can let me know, you can subscribe, you can hit the bell button so that you are notified when the next lesson comes out, and uh, I won't have the comment section open but if you wish to let me know something, whether it's positive or even negative, no one is perfect, um, please just send me an email and let me know. Uh, maybe you have some questions or advice, anything, just use the email and I'll be happy to, uh, to reply. But no, no comments uh, below these lessons, okay? I hope you understand. I just don't have enough time to keep <laughs> keep uh, sort of on top of everything. So uh, anything you want to share with me, please feel free to do so just using the email that I will leave below in the description. Okay, good. Okay, take care. Good luck practicing. And I'll see you in the next lesson where we will have a look at some exceptions. Okay? Adios.